that work in the wedding industry, have you ever seen a couple and immediately thought, this ends in divorce? Story one, the whole thing started on a bad note. My best friend had gotten involved in a messy, secretive relationship with a woman who was still dating someone else at the time. I tried to talk some sense into him, suggesting that he should let her break things off properly before they pursued anything serious. I told him that if they didn't start on solid ground, it would only lead to trouble down the road. But of course he didn't listen. The relationship continued on the same shaky footing it had started with. When he eventually asked me to be his best man, I couldn't help but feel conflicted. I told him straight up that I didn't think either of them was ready for marriage. There were too many unresolved issues between them, and the way things had started made me feel like they were rushing into something they weren't prepared for. Despite my reservations, I eventually agreed, hoping that maybe, just maybe, they'd figure things out along the way. But by the day of the wedding, my gut was telling me that this was going to end badly. I could sense it, and honestly, I think the groom could feel it too. He seemed nervous, not in the usual pre-wedding jitters kind of way, but like someone standing on the edge of a decision he wasn't sure he wanted to make. Just before the ceremony, I pulled him aside. I handed him the keys to my car and $300 in cash, and I told him, you can still get away. There's time. Just go. Drive somewhere. And think about this. I wasn't trying to sabotage his wedding, but I knew that if he had any doubts, this was the moment to act. It was a chance to escape the inevitable pain that I feared was coming down the road. He didn't take my advice. The wedding went ahead as planned, and for a while, it seemed like maybe they'd make it work. But in my heart, I knew they were just delaying the inevitable. Six years later, it all fell apart just as I had feared. The relationship ended with accusations of cheating, and they had two kids who, unfortunately, would grow up never fully understanding what had gone wrong between their parents. It was a sad situation, and watching it all unfold was painful especially since I'd seen it coming from the very beginning. But this story has a silver lining. About 15 years after that first wedding, I introduced my best friend to someone else. Someone genuine, kind, and completely different from his first wife. They hit it off and not long after they were married. This time, the relationship felt right from the start. There was no drama, no messy beginnings, just a real connection built on trust and mutual respect. Once again, I had the honor of being his best man. As I stood beside him on his wedding day, I told him, If you walk away from this one, you're the fool. But deep down, I knew he wouldn't. This time was different. They've now been married for 15 years, and they're as happy as can be. Story 2. I don't work in the same industry as my boyfriend, but I do have a personal story that revolves around his job. A few years ago, we were invited to the wedding of one of his female co-workers. She had become somewhat of a friend to us over time, and we'd often go out dancing together while her fiancé was stationed on the East Coast. She loved dancing, especially line dancing, and we would all have a great time. She never seemed to mind that my boyfriend joined us, even though her fiancé wasn't around. In fact, she was always upbeat and seemed comfortable with the arrangement. Fast forward to her wedding day. It was a big event, and we both received official invitations. I had even attended her bridal shower, so there was no question about whether we were welcome. Everything seemed to be going smoothly at first but things quickly took a bizarre and unsettling turn. During the reception, my boyfriend was approached by an older man who turned out to be the groom's father. He didn't come over to exchange pleasantries or welcome us to the celebration. Instead, he pulled my boyfriend aside and, in a hushed but threatening tone, told him to leave the wedding. The reason? The groom apparently didn't like the fact that a male co-worker had shown up to his bride's big day, even though we had been formally invited. The father's threat was both absurd and chilling. I have connections, he said and you'll never work in this industry again if you don't leave. It was especially ridiculous considering the man was retired and likely didn't have much influence left in the industry. Still, it was clear this wasn't a request. It was an ultimatum. My boyfriend was furious, but out of respect for the bride and not wanting to cause a scene on her wedding day, we decided to stay low-key and eventually left the event quietly. It was infuriating to be forced out of a celebration we had been invited to, especially when the groom had the audacity to send his father to do his dirty work. The whole situation was incredibly awkward, but what made it even worse was how the groom treated his bride. Despite it being her special day, he refused to dance with her except for the obligatory wedding photos. Everyone knew how much she loved dancing. It was one of her passions, and she had been so excited to celebrate her wedding by hitting the dance floor with her new husband. Instead, she was left disappointed, barely getting to enjoy herself while her new groom sulked on the sidelines. It was painfully obvious to everyone who cared about her that this marriage wasn't going to last. The groom's behavior wasn't just a one-time thing. He had always been a bit controlling and indifferent to her feelings. Seeing her crushed like that on what should have been one of the happiest days of her life was heartbreaking. Story 3. Years ago, I had a small side business making custom cakes, and wedding cakes were always a big part of my orders. I loved the creative process, 
working with couples to bring their cake dreams to life. But occasionally, I'd come across a bridezilla that made me wonder why I ever got into the business in the first place. One particular wedding cake order stands out as the most absurd, and it's a story I still shake my head about to this day. It started out like any other wedding consultation. The bride-to-be, a woman in her early 20s, came in to discuss the details of her cake. She was excited and brimming with ideas, which is always fun for me as it gives me plenty of inspiration to work with. However, I soon realized that her enthusiasm had a bit of a controlling edge to it. Everything had to be exactly her way, and she didn't seem interested in anyone else's input, especially not her fiancé's. Things took a sharp turn during the cake consultation when the groom dared to express his own opinion on the cake flavor. You'd think he had suggested something outrageous, like a cake made of spinach, based on her reaction. He simply had a favorite flavor in mind and wanted it to be part of the wedding. But the moment he voiced his preference, the bride's face dropped. She didn't just politely disagree, oh no, that would have been too easy. Instead, she spiraled into a full-blown meltdown, right in front of me. She started by throwing a fit, her voice rising as she ranted about how it was her day and how the cake was her decision alone. The groom tried to calmly suggest that the cake was for both of them, but this only seemed to make things worse. Her tantrum escalated, and before I knew it, she stormed off into my bathroom, slammed the door, and locked herself inside. I couldn't believe it. One moment, we were discussing cake flavors, and the next, I had a hysterical bride barricading herself in my bathroom like a stubborn child. Through the door, I could hear her sobbing and whining about how unreasonable her fiancé was being for wanting a say in something as minor as the cake flavor. She acted as if this single disagreement was a catastrophic betrayal, something that could ruin her entire wedding day. I knocked on the door, trying to reason with her. I even said, you need to get out of my bathroom. This is not the place to be having a tantrum about cake flavors. But instead of hearing the sound of the door unlocking, I was met with a pitiful, drawn-out whine. No! It was a level of defiance I hadn't encountered since dealing with toddlers, and I couldn't help but think how absurd it was that a grown woman was throwing such a fit over something so trivial. Meanwhile, the groom just stood there awkwardly, clearly unsure of what to do or say. He gave me an apologetic look, but I couldn't help but feel sorry for the guy. Here he was, trying to be involved in the wedding planning, and his bride was losing her mind over cake. I tried a few more times to coax her out of my bathroom, but each time I was met with the same whiny refusal. I could hardly believe that this was happening. Eventually, the groom managed to calm her down enough to come out, but by that point, the atmosphere was thoroughly awkward, and I was more than ready to wrap up the consultation. Story 4 The day started out normally enough, or at least as normally as wedding days go. The bride was stunning, absolutely radiant. She used to model, and you could tell. She was effortlessly gorgeous, maybe a size 2, with a natural grace about her. Meanwhile, the groom was, well, just your run-of-the-mill cute. Nothing particularly remarkable about him. He wasn't unattractive by any means, but standing next to his bride, you couldn't help but notice the contrast. Things started getting weird pretty early on. As I was snapping photos of the bride getting ready, the groom was off with his groomsmen, pounding back shots of vodka like it was a frat party. The vibe was off from the beginning, but it got worse when he made an offhand comment about his bride being unattractive. I couldn't believe my ears. Here was this woman, an absolute knockout, and her own husband was disparaging her on what should have been the happiest day of their lives. Despite his cringeworthy remarks, I carried on with my work, trying to stay professional. But it became harder and harder to do that as the day went on. The groom was becoming more obnoxious with every shot he took, and it was clear that he had a pretty intense attachment to his mother. His mom was hovering around like a shadow, making sure everything went according to her vision of the day. I've seen plenty of mama's boys in my time, but this guy took the cake. It was bad enough that his mom had to suggest he take some photos with his actual bride instead of just posing with her. I tried my best to redirect the groom and get him to focus on the bride, but he wasn't having it. Every time I suggested they take some romantic shots together, he would snap at me. At one point, he straight up told me to shut the F asterisk asterisk K up, and I was just about ready to throw in the towel. Then, as if things couldn't get worse, he decided to flash me. Yep, he flashed me his junk in the middle of his own wedding. That was the final straw. After the third time he snapped at me, I started packing up my gear. I wasn't about to tolerate that kind of disrespect, no matter how much they were paying me. When he saw me packing up, the groom started yelling, but I calmly told him that no one talks to me like that. I'd send them a refund, and that would be the end of it. I knew right then that this marriage wasn't going to last. It wasn't even a question. The groom's behavior screamed disaster, and I could see the bride's mounting frustration. What happened next was almost laughable. The groom, in front of his friends and family, broke down crying and promised he'd behave. I stood there, feeling completely detached from the situation, but agreed to stay. 
He kept his word for the rest of the day, but it didn't matter. Two weeks later, I got the news. The marriage had been annulled. No one wanted the photos, not even the bride. I had been paid in full by the bride's father, who had also generously tipped me. Out of fairness, I offered to refund him half of the payment since the photos were never, but he declined, saying, the moment the groom yelled at you and broke down in tears, the bride knew it wasn't going to work. Apparently, the whole family had been trying to convince them to call off the wedding before it even happened. In the end, I was paid in full for photos no one ever wanted, and I learned an important lesson. Weddings, especially ones like that, just aren't worth the trouble for me. Story 5. I'll never forget this one wedding I catered for a few years back. As someone who's worked a lot of weddings, you start to pick up on certain patterns, especially when the bride and groom get a little too comfortable with the open bar. This particular wedding stood out to me because, well, let's just say things got out of hand faster than you'd expect at a happily ever after celebration. The day started out beautifully, as most weddings do. The ceremony was elegant, the bride looked stunning in her dress, and the guests seemed to be having a great time. But things took a turn for the worse during the reception when alcohol started flowing a little too freely. At first, it was just your typical wedding revelry, people laughing, dancing, and enjoying the night. But as the drinks kept coming, the vibe started to shift. The groom, who had been pretty tame during the early part of the evening, suddenly became the center of attention, and not in a good way. I noticed him getting a bit too close to the maid of honor, and it wasn't just friendly wedding banter. Both of them were clearly drunk, and as the night wore on, their interactions went from mildly inappropriate to downright uncomfortable. The groom's hand would linger on her back a little too long, and they'd lean in close, whispering and giggling like they were the ones getting married. At one point, I saw them stumble off to the side, still laughing and clearly crossing some boundaries that should have been reserved for the bride. You could see it in their body language. The lines were blurring, and neither of them seemed to care that they were in full view of the guests. Meanwhile, the bride was completely oblivious to what was happening. She was on the dance floor, absolutely wasted, flopping around to the music like she had no cares in the world. It wasn't long before she got so drunk that she had to be escorted off the floor and into the restroom to freshen up. A couple of bridesmaids helped her out, doing their best to keep her composed, but the damage was already done. She could barely stand, let alone notice her new husband cozying up to her best friend. As someone who's worked at many weddings, I've seen this kind of thing before. It's like clockwork. Whenever the bride and groom get trashed at their own reception, something always seems to go wrong. Maybe it's the lowered inhibitions or the underlying tension that comes bubbling to the surface. But more often than not, I've noticed that these couples don't last long after the big day. It's not always the case, but it's something I've come to expect when things get messy like this. By the time the bride came back from the restroom, she was barely coherent. She danced a bit more, but the magic of the night was clearly fading. The tension between the groom and the maid of honor was hard to ignore. And while most of the guests were too caught up in their own fun to notice, I had a front row seat to the brewing disaster. Story 6. One particular couple still stands out in my memory as a textbook case of this. From the moment they hired me, it was clear that their wedding was less about celebrating their love and more about creating a spectacle worthy of a feature in one of those glossy luxury wedding magazines. They spared no expense, and I'm talking no expense. Everything had to be perfect. Flawless venue, designer dresses, gourmet catering, the works. They wanted their big day to be talked about for years to come and they were willing to pay whatever it took to make it happen. But as the planning progressed, it became obvious that their obsession with the wedding overshadowed everything else, including their relationships with each other and their families. They weren't just planning a wedding. They were curating a magazine-worthy event, and every detail was scrutinized to fit their vision. The bride and groom even started choosing their bridal party based on appearance rather than who actually mattered to them. It wasn't about who had been there for them through thick and thin. It was about who would look the best standing next to them in photos. The bride had two brothers, and this is where things started to get uncomfortable. One brother was conventionally attractive. He looked like he could have walked straight out of a Hugo Boss ad. The other brother, on the other hand, was stockier, a little less polished. He had a kind heart and a great personality. But let's just say he had more of a Fat Thor vibe. When it came time to choose the groomsman, the decision was made based purely on looks. Only the hot brother made the cut. The other brother, who had been excited to stand by his sister's side on her special day, was left out entirely, creating a lot of hurt feelings and tension within the family. This decision was just one of many that led to growing resentment. The family was frustrated, but more importantly, cracks were starting to form between the bride and groom. Every choice they made, whether it was the color scheme, the guest list, or even the floral arrangements, seemed to spark a new argument. They were fighting constantly, but instead of addressing the underlying issues, 
They would brush it off and refocus on the wedding details, as if that could fix everything. The tension was palpable during every planning meeting, and it became clear to me that this couple wasn't ready for marriage. They were more in love with the idea of a picture-perfect wedding than with each other. Every time they butted heads over something trivial, I'd silently think, this isn't going to last. And I was right. In a twist of irony, they ended up divorcing a week before their wedding was featured in the very luxury bridal magazine they had been aiming for. The event they had poured all their energy into was immortalized on glossy pages. But their marriage had crumbled before they even had a chance to properly start it. Story 7. Right from the start, I should have known this wedding was going to be a disaster. If the groom's last name literally translating to banana wasn't a clue, the behavior of the bride certainly sealed the deal. She was the definition of a bridezilla. Demanding, difficult, and determined to get her way no matter what. I was just temping in the office for the week, but that was more than enough time for her to make my life a living nightmare. She wasn't satisfied with the package she had chosen, even though it came with plenty of nice perks. No, she wanted extras. Things we usually offer as free courtesies but aren't actually included in the package. She nagged and pushed until we eventually gave in to her demands, but not before dragging out the process and stressing everyone out. It was a week from hell, and I remember counting down the days until this bridezilla would be someone else's problem. Then came the cake tasting. We had set up her table in the ballroom alongside tables for four other couples, all of whom were scheduled to come in at different times. My sister was the bride's wedding coordinator, and I was working as the butler on staff that day. The bride arrived with her groom, and almost immediately, she started causing trouble. She walked over to another couple's beautifully decorated table and without hesitation, stole their flowers. She just plucked them off the table and placed them on her own, as if she were entitled to them. When I noticed, I walked over and calmly took the flowers back, placing them where they belonged. But instead of apologizing, she and her groom became furious. They started complaining to my sister, not realizing she was my sibling, about how I had dared to tell them no and enforce company policy. It was a bit absurd, honestly. How could they expect me to let them walk all over us like that? My sister wasn't having it. After listening to them badmouth me, she called me over and, with a smile, introduced me as her baby sister. The look on their faces was priceless. They immediately started stammering out awkward apologies, clearly embarrassed to have been caught. After that, things went relatively smoothly for me, but the cracks in their relationship were already obvious, and we knew for certain that this marriage wasn't going to last when the bride did something we had never seen before. She got absolutely wasted at her cake tasting. Now, most people like to enjoy the tasting, try out a few flavors, Maybe have a glass of wine or champagne. But this bride took it to another level. Her logic? It's free, so I want to know everything on your bar's menu. She made it her mission to sample every single drink. And within an hour, she was beyond tipsy. She started making frequent trips to the bathroom, each time looking more disheveled than the last. Meanwhile, her groom wasn't exactly on his best behavior either. Every time she disappeared, he would make the rounds, flirting aggressively with every woman in the room. It wasn't subtle or charming. It was downright creepy. He hit on everyone from the waitstaff to the other brides, and it was clear that this couple was already teetering on the edge. The day of the wedding arrived, and as expected, it was a total mess. The groom got into a heated argument with one of his groomsmen that escalated into a physical fight. In the chaos, they ended up shattering one of the glass doors leading to the courtyard. The bride, unsurprisingly, got drunk again and spent most of the night crying in the bathroom too overwhelmed or intoxicated to enjoy her own reception. The real kicker came when the groom hooked up with one of the bridesmaids in the limo. He was caught in the act by his own mother, which sparked the earlier fight with the groomsman, who had apparently tried to intervene. The whole event was a total circus, and by the end of the night, it was clear to everyone that this marriage was doomed. Story 8. I worked as a server at weddings for about a year, and during that time, I saw all sorts of things. Everything from sweet, heartfelt moments to outright chaos. But one wedding in particular stands out in my memory for all the wrong reasons. It was a beautiful day at a venue set on a golf course. The scenery was perfect. Rolling greens, a picturesque pond, and an elegant reception hall. At first, everything seemed to be going smoothly. The bride and groom were all smiles during the ceremony. The guests were enjoying the food and drinks, and the mood was light and celebratory. But as the night wore on, the alcohol started to flow a little too freely. And that's when things took a turn. The groom and his groomsmen had been hitting the bar hard since the reception began, and by the middle of the evening, they were completely drunk. At first, it was the usual stuff. Rowdy toasts, a little too much laughter, and some overly enthusiastic dancing. But then, for reasons that still baffle me, they decided it would be a great idea to go for a swim, in their tuxes. I'll never forget the sight of the groom and all of his groomsmen stumbling out toward the golf course, heading straight for one of the decorative ponds that lined the fairways. 
Without a second thought, they stripped off their jackets, kicked off their shoes, and plunged right into the water, still in their tuxedos, laughing and splashing around like a bunch of teenagers at summer camp. Meanwhile, the bride was standing on the back porch of the reception hall absolutely furious. She was screaming at the top of her lungs, calling the groom every name in the book. How could you be such a dumb peach? She yelled, her voice carrying across the entire venue. It wasn't just a playful scolding, she was angry. This wasn't how she imagined her wedding day going, and she made sure everyone within earshot knew it. I stood there, watching from a distance as she continued to rail at him. She was visibly upset. And the more she yelled, the more it became clear that this wasn't just about him swimming in a pond. This was about everything. The months of planning, the stress, the expectations, and now her husband acting like a complete fool in front of all their guests. Her words carried a deeper frustration, as if she was already regretting the vows she had just taken. The groom and his buddies, drunk and oblivious, paid her no mind. They kept splashing around in the pond, laughing and joking like nothing was wrong. I don't think they realized just how much trouble the groom was in. Or maybe they were too far gone to care. After what felt like forever, the bride stormed back inside, her face red with anger and embarrassment. And then she disappeared. I didn't see her for the rest of the reception. While the groom eventually dragged himself out of the pond, soaked and grinning like a kid who had just pulled off a great prank, the atmosphere had shifted. Guests were whispering to each other, unsure of what to do or say. The party limped on without the bride, but it was clear that the night had taken a nosedive. As the reception wound down, I couldn't help but wonder what the future held for that couple. Watching the bride scream at her new husband, lamenting out loud for the whole world to hear that she had married him, it was hard not to think that this wasn't going to end well. The resentment in her voice was palpable, and the groom's careless behavior only seemed to confirm her worst fears. Story 9 As a former ballroom dance instructor, I've worked with countless couples over the years, helping them prepare for one of the most memorable moments of their wedding day, the first dance. For many, it's a magical experience, seeing two people in love glide across the dance floor, practicing the steps that will kick off their marriage in style. But for some, it was clear that the romance stopped the moment they walked into the studio. I can't even count how many times I found myself thinking, why are you two even together? From the way they interacted during our lessons, it was obvious that some couples just didn't get along. They would be rude to each other, dismiss each other's opinions, or simply not care about what the other wanted for the dance. Now, I know it's just a small slice of their life. Maybe they were stressed from wedding planning, or maybe they just didn't take dance lessons as seriously as I did. But you can't help but sense that something deeper is going on. When you spend enough time observing people, you start to develop an instinct for these things. And sometimes you just know that the relationship is heading for trouble. One of the biggest red flags was when couples couldn't agree on the choreography. It would start small, like one person wanting a traditional waltz, while the other wanted something more playful or upbeat. But instead of compromising or listening to each other's ideas, the disagreement would spiral into bickering, with each side digging in their heels. The lesson would grind to a halt as I tried to smooth things over, but the tension would hang in the air like a dark cloud. In those moments, I wasn't just a dance instructor. I was a referee trying to keep things civil while they hashed out their issues on the dance floor. There were also the couples who came in after clearly having a massive fight in the car. You could tell right away, even before they said a word. The energy was heavy and their body language was stiff and closed off. One would sit quietly, staring at their phone, while the other would pace around, visibly irritated. When they finally started dancing, it was like watching two people trying to avoid each other rather than move in sync. I'd ask them to hold each other in a close frame, but the discomfort was palpable. It was as if they couldn't wait to get out of the studio and away from each other. Of course, I did my best to keep the mood light and focus on the task at hand, but you can't ignore the elephant in the room. Sometimes, I would gently ask if everything was okay, and they'd brush it off with a quick, oh, we're just stressed. But the truth is, when two people can't put aside their frustration for even a few minutes of dancing, it doesn't bode well for the long term. I remember one couple in particular who really stood out. They came in for their first dance lesson, and right from the start, you could tell they had very different ideas about how it should go. The groom wanted something simple and elegant, a slow dance where they could just sway back and forth, enjoying the moment. But the bride had her heart set on a flashy routine with lifts and spins, something straight out of a dance competition. Instead of talking it through and finding a middle ground, they started arguing right in front of me, throwing accusations about who never listens to whom and whose ideas are always better. The tension was so thick, it felt like they were having a much bigger argument than just about a dance. By the end of the lesson, they had barely spoken to each other, 
And I remember thinking, if this is how they handle a small disagreement, how are they going to deal with the challenges of marriage? Not every couple was like that, of course. There were plenty who came in excited to work together, eager to create something special for their big day. You could feel the love and connection between them, even when they fumbled the steps or got a little frustrated with the learning process. Those were the couples I loved working with, the ones who reminded me that the first dance is about more than just the choreography. It's about two people coming together, in step with one another, ready to face whatever comes next. But those other couples, the ones who couldn't even pretend to get along for a few minutes in the studio, they were the ones who made me question the future of their relationships. In my experience, the way they danced together was often a reflection of how they communicated. And for some, that first dance was already off to a rocky start. Story 10. One night, I came in for my shift expecting to find a lively wedding reception still going strong. The celebration was supposed to last until 1 a.m., but when I arrived at 11 p.m., everything was eerily quiet. The tables were half cleared, the dance floor deserted, and the only people left were a few staff members cleaning up. Confused, I asked one of my coworkers what had happened. Turns out the bride and groom had a massive fight right there in the middle of their own reception. It was bad enough that the bride stormed out, leaving her new husband behind, and went home with her mom. The party ended on the spot. It was as if the entire event had been erased in a matter of minutes. Not exactly the fairy tale ending everyone had in mind. As strange as that night was, it's nothing compared to another wedding I witnessed at the hotel. This one started going downhill long before the reception even began. It all started during the rehearsal dinner, which was supposed to be a joyful gathering of family and close friends. Instead, it turned into an explosive argument that spilled out of the private dining room and into the hotel lobby for everyone to witness. The fight was between the bride and groom, but it didn't stay between just them for long. It quickly escalated, and soon enough, all the guests in the lobby were unwillingly privy to their dirty laundry. The bride wasn't holding back. In front of dozens of people, she shouted about how much she hated his parents. No vague complaints here, she listed specific reasons for her disdain. But that wasn't the real bombshell. She also announced loudly and clearly that she was pregnant and didn't know who the father was. You can imagine how that little revelation went over with the groom, his family, and pretty much everyone within earshot. As the argument grew uglier, more and more shocking details started to emerge. The tension in the lobby was thick enough to cut with a knife, and you could see the guests' reactions changing from disbelief to discomfort. A few tried to step in and calm things down, but the damage was done. The next morning, about half of the guest list packed their bags and checked out of the hotel early, clearly deciding they didn't want to stick around for whatever drama was going to unfold next. Despite the public spectacle and the shocking revelations, the couple still went through with the wedding. They stood before their friends and family and said their vows as if the night before hadn't happened at all. I don't know how they managed to pull it together after everything that was aired out in front of everyone, but they did. It's hard to imagine what that marriage is like now, though, considering the fiery start they had. Story 11. It's honestly heartbreaking reading through so many of these stories and realizing that in a lot of these relationships, the couples probably weren't even friends to each other. It seems like, for many, they went into marriage without the foundation of real friendship, and that's likely why so many of them ended in disaster. I mean, when you think about it, friendship is such a critical part of any relationship, especially marriage. You spend so much time with your partner, more than with anyone else, so they should be your friend, right? But clearly, not everyone sees it that way. It's sad because, without that friendship, it seems almost impossible for the relationship to thrive long term. I didn't expect so many responses to my comment, though. Wow! Thanks for sharing your stories. I've really enjoyed reading through them. There's something so comforting about hearing other people's experiences, whether they're good or bad. It makes you feel a little less alone, like we're all just out here figuring things out together. And honestly, some of these stories have given me a lot of perspective on how lucky I am. I realize now that I've been incredibly fortunate to have found my favorite person. My partner and I were best friends above all else, and that's what keeps us going strong. We talk about everything, laugh at the same dumb jokes, and just genuinely enjoy each other's company. It makes me sad to think that so many people haven't had that in their relationships, but at the same time, it makes me appreciate what I have even more. Story 12. I used to run a fairly high-end hotel and restaurant, and every now and then we hosted weddings. Normally, these events were well-planned and enjoyable, but one particular wedding stands out as a prime example of what can go wrong when poor decisions are made right from the start. My first mistake was agreeing to host a wedding on Christmas Eve. In hindsight, I should have seen that as a big red flag. Who schedules their wedding for Christmas Eve, right? It's one of the busiest, most stressful days of the year when everyone just wants to be at home, relaxing with family and preparing for Christmas. Instead, these poor guests were forced to travel across the country for a wedding on the worst possible day. It already didn't bode well. 
The trouble started early, literally. The wedding party arrived a full three hours before they were supposed to. Naturally, we weren't quite ready to receive them yet, and that's when the bride showed her true colors. This woman was a battle axe if I've ever seen one. She immediately started shouting at my staff and me for not being prepared, as if it were our fault that they arrived much earlier than scheduled. Her family, standing awkwardly around her, looked completely mortified. From the expressions on their faces, it was clear this kind of behavior wasn't a shock to them, but they were still embarrassed by her outburst. The rest of the night was filled with various red flags, though none quite as alarming as the initial confrontation. The bride continued to bark orders at everyone as if we were her personal servants. At one point, she yelled at her maid of honor for not having tissues on hand for a teary-eyed moment, and later she nearly caused a scene when the music wasn't to her liking. You could just feel the tension in the air, as if everyone was walking on eggshells around her, afraid of setting her off. But the real kicker of the night came courtesy of the groom. He had spent the majority of the evening downing glass after glass of whiskey, and by the time the reception was winding down, he was completely wasted. He stumbled over to me at the bar, slurring his words, and asked if I could help him with something. Curious but cautious, I listened as he leaned in closer and said, Come with me to my hotel room and break me in as a married man. You can imagine my shock. I had to keep a straight face and politely refuse his bizarre, drunken request, but inside I was dumbfounded. Who does that at their own wedding? It was one of those surreal moments where you question what is happening and how things got to this point. Clearly, this was not a couple built on healthy communication or respect, and the warning signs had been there all night. After politely declining his invitation, I discreetly informed my staff to keep an eye on the situation, just in case he caused any more trouble. By the end of the night, I was just relieved it was over. The wedding party finally left, but the whole experience left a sour taste in my mouth. Hosting a wedding is usually a joyous occasion, but this one was a disaster from start to finish. I couldn't help but wonder what the future held for this couple, but if the events of that night were any indication, it wasn't going to be smooth sailing. Story 13. As a wedding photographer, I've seen all kinds of couples, but this particular one raised red flags from the very beginning. The first warning sign was the sheer amount of money they were throwing around for this wedding. They had multiple venues booked, including a swanky golf resort, and everything was top-of-the-line fancy. I couldn't help but think that the amount they were spending could easily have bought them a luxury car or been a down payment on an expensive house. It was that kind of money. When I arrived at their house to do the getting-ready shots, things took an even stranger turn. The groom's family was there, and they were incredibly warm and welcoming to me, almost treating me like I was a close family friend. At first, I thought it was sweet, but then I started noticing something odd. Anytime the bride's name was mentioned or she came up in conversation, the family would exchange knowing glances, roll their eyes, or make subtle faces of disapproval. It was clear that they were not happy with the groom's choice of wife, but they didn't outright say it. The implication seemed to be that because the couple already had a child, the groom felt obligated to go through with the wedding. It was a bit sad, really, because I got the distinct feeling that he wasn't all that thrilled about getting married. I'll admit, I was tempted to tell him that he didn't have to go through with it if he wasn't happy. Of course, I couldn't come right out and say that. It wouldn't have been professional. But I think I may have gently implied it during our conversations. The groom was kind, soft-spoken, and honestly seemed like a nice guy. The bride, on the other hand, was, well, a bit of a nightmare. On the day of the wedding, her true colors really started to show. From the moment I arrived, she was bossy and difficult to work with, snapping at everyone around her. It was exhausting trying to navigate her demands while also staying focused on capturing the best moments of the day. But the worst part was how she treated her new husband. Right after the ceremony, they were outside taking some photos and she was already yelling at him about something trivial. It was a bit shocking to see. Most couples are still basking in the glow of their just married moment at that point. But not her. She was all business and he just stood there quietly taking it. Even after the wedding was over, she continued to be difficult. She was picky and rude during the editing process, demanding unreasonable changes to photos, and complaining about things that were, frankly, beyond my control. It left a sour taste in my mouth. From what I saw, she treated her husband with the same harshness, and it just made me feel bad for him. It wasn't the kind of relationship dynamic you hope to see in newlyweds. Out of curiosity, I checked in on them a while later. To my surprise, they're still married. But based on her social media posts, it seems like things haven't exactly gotten better. I noticed that she's pretty outspoken about her anti-vaccine stance, which probably says more about her personality than anything else. Story 14, I used to work at a pretty popular wedding venue, so I've seen my fair share of wedding drama, but this one really takes the cake. It all started off normally enough. Bride and groom came in the day before for their rehearsal. They checked over the decorations, made sure everything was in place,
and played one of those sweet, cheesy videos of the couple's journey together. You know, the typical How We Met montage filled with cute photos and heartfelt music. All pretty standard wedding stuff. But when the actual wedding day rolled around, things went south fast. The bride and groom showed up already at each other's throats. From the moment they stepped through the door, they were bickering non-stop. I'm not talking about small pre-wedding jitters either. These two were really going at it. The tension was so thick you could feel it in the air, and it didn't let up the entire day. They somehow made it through the ceremony, though I have no idea how, given how much they were sniping at each other. You'd think they would have put their differences aside for just a few hours, but nope. They carried that fight straight into the reception. By the time dinner was served, the groom had clearly had enough, and that's when he started hitting the whiskey. Hard. It didn't take long for the groom to completely drink himself into oblivion. He was knocking back drinks left and right, and before anyone knew it, he was so drunk he could barely stand. The speeches hadn't even started yet, but he was already in no condition to give or hear one. Eventually, his groomsmen had to carry him out of the venue because he couldn't walk on his own anymore. And that sweet video of the couple that they were so excited to show the day before? It never even got played. While it was undoubtedly a disaster of a wedding for the couple, it ended up being the best shift I'd ever had. The groom's early exit meant that we got to close up shop way ahead of schedule, and to top it all off, I got to take home a ton of leftover food that had already been paid for. It was a win-win for me. Home early with a feast in hand. Story 15. Ugh, I once had the misfortune of photographing this truly awful couple. From the moment they arrived, I could tell it was going to be a long day. The bride, who seemed determined to be as unpleasant as possible, didn't crack a smile the entire time. Her expression was a permanent scowl, and her attitude only got worse as the day went on. What really stuck out, though, was the way she treated her groom, Mark. All day long, she followed him around, barking orders like he was her personal assistant. It was never ending. My Ark, get my shoes. My Ark, where's my bag? She repeated his name constantly, each time in a more exasperated tone than the last, as if he was the sole reason for her dissatisfaction. It was painful to watch, honestly. Mark, on the other hand, looked completely miserable. He barely spoke and seemed like he was just going through the motions, trying to survive the day. I've seen grooms who were nervous or overwhelmed, but this was different. He seemed utterly defeated, like he'd resigned himself to a life of being ordered around. At one point, my team and I asked the couple to kiss for a photo, which is usually a sweet and simple moment during a wedding shoot. But instead of the usual response, the bride just snapped, Oh, we're not that kind of couple. It wasn't just what she said, but the way she said it. Like the idea of showing any affection for her husband was the most ridiculous thing in the world. I was stunned. I mean, it's their wedding day. If there's ever a time to be that kind of couple, surely it's during your wedding photos. The whole atmosphere around them was heavy and uncomfortable. Usually, I can catch a few candid moments of joy or laughter during the day, but with these two, there was none of that. Just tension and a sense of duty. Even the guests seemed awkward around them as if they didn't quite know how to navigate the obvious lack of connection between the bride and groom. Story 16. As a DJ, I've worked at around 20 to 30 weddings each year, and let me tell you, I've seen it all. But two particular weddings stick out in my memory, both for wildly different reasons. The first one was a bit of a roller coaster. The bride had initially booked me for her wedding, but then a few months later she canceled, explaining that they were no longer getting married. She wanted her deposit back, but as I always make clear in the contract, deposits are non-refundable. I offered to let her apply it toward a future event, whether for herself or someone else, which she seemed to accept. Then, about four months after that, I get another call from her. She wanted to book me for her wedding again, only this time to a different guy. I couldn't help but shake my head at the sheer speed of it all. But hey, a booking's a booking, and I wasn't about to complain. Still, that was one wedding that left me wondering just how fast things had unraveled with the original fiancé. The second story, though, was pure chaos. It started off normal enough. Beautiful venue, happy couple, and guests enjoying their dinner. But things took a turn pretty quickly when the groom started knocking back drinks faster than anyone could keep count. By the time dinner was over and we transitioned into dancing, the groom was absolutely plastered. At first, it seemed like he was just having a good time. He started grinding on his best man on the dance floor, and everyone laughed because, you know, harmless joke, right? But then he kept going. Next, he was grinding on one of the groomsmen, then, shockingly, on his own aunt. At that point, the crowd was getting a bit uncomfortable, but things got even worse when he started grinding on one of the bridesmaids, who looked visibly uneasy. The bride had already been upset with him for most of the night, and seeing him make a fool of himself in front of everyone was the last straw. She completely lost it. I watched as she stormed across the dance floor, grabbed him by the sleeve, and dragged him outside. Their screaming match could be heard through the venue's doors. 
it was clear the night wasn't going to end well for them. For the rest of the evening, the bride was MIA with the groom nowhere in sight. We ended up skipping all the major wedding events. No first dance, no cake cutting, nothing. But then, much later in the night, the bride reappeared to throw the bouquet. At that point, she was well into the drinks herself and was partying hard with her friends, seemingly trying to salvage the night on her own terms. As for the groom, I didn't see him for the rest of the reception. It wasn't until I was packing up my gear at the end of the night that I spotted him outside. He was standing with his dad and another guy furiously talking about something, clearly still angry. From the looks of it, whatever happened during that screaming match didn't resolve itself. Honestly, after witnessing all that, I'd be surprised if their marriage lasted. It was a train wreck from start to finish, and it didn't look like either of them was in a great place. Some weddings make you think, yeah, this couple's got a chance, but this one, the odds didn't look good at all.